G'day, my name is Glenn, and well, basically, I just want to talk about the things that I would like to investigate in the future. So, these have been extensively studied, and I'm talking about certain geological formations that are around Victoria. So, in the next, probably go once a month, because, you know, I'm not a rich person, but I want to investigate certain geological sites that we can see in Victoria. So we've got the Triassic is it Council Trench, that's near Bacchus Marsh. I'll go and have a look, but I have a feeling that that's going to be in the poor state. And around there we can also look at uh, Permian uh, Tillite or pretty much uh, the glaciation that happened in Australia during the Permian. So that's two things we can look at there. Uh, then we can have a look at the Cowbell Baffle Lift. It's a very interesting baffle lift that is in the north around Pylong. And it does have three different... Uh, oh, sorry. Three different uh, actual... Formations in it, so he has. We'll have a look at the geological maps, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute. And then I want to go up to Heathcote. I'll probably do that first. Go up to Heathcote, and have a look at the. Oh, I forget what is it called again. It's a geo park anyway. So uh, that, that's also granite, igneous rock. So two of them igneous rock, intrusive. Uh, not extrusive because that's mainly just basalt where I live. And one of them is a lake or river deposit that has plant fossils, probably poorly preserved, and also Permian glaciation and its effects on uh, the actual rock. So we'll have a look at the geological maps. Okay, so I could screen capture this, but yeah, no, nah, I don't want to do that. So here we have the cowboy baffle lift. As you can see, it's a oval shape, and it contains three types of diorite, granodiorite. Actually, no, the granodiorite to granite. So first we have the. We'll have a look at the um, what the formations are. Okay, so they. Uh, basically, are they Devonian? Yeah, they're all Devonian in age. Okay, so we have the Baton. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. We have the older one, which is the Baton Granodiorite. Then we have the, oh no, no. Sorry, got Silurian. Uh, the pile on granite and then intruded into that was a baton granodiorite so you've got two phases here like the porphyritic and the fine grained and then into that we have the buvalet granodiorite i don't even know how to say it so that's very interesting so here we have the three formations or four formations um probably 10,000. Yeah, it's Rainy Creek, Porphyry. So that, that's a little bit away. I didn't even know that was actually part of it. Okay, so this is a Cowbell Baffle Leaf. That's what I want to look at. And it gives you some information. So Pylon Granite is a biotype granite. Pale grey, find the coarse grain Porphyry with large fenacris of. There's even fell so I see just large crystals. Occasional biotite. Microgranular X enclaves. So that means uh, and biotite clots. So the microgranular enclaves are just parts of uh, rock that's broken off as the magma is oh, uh, intruded. And I'm talking about country rock. So that could be another granite whatever that 
has uh, been included in type and it's S type so sedimentary type intrusion so it's just mounted sedimentary rock uh, that's turned into granite so obviously that was a quartz probably quartz sand sedimentary rock okay the baton granite porphyritic quartz feldspar biotite granodiorite coarse grain granodiorite large plasia clase I'm glad everyone so the Bainton Granodiorite is quartz, feldspar, biotite, granodiorite. So the composition seems to be similar. Medium grain, so this, so this is coarse grained. This is medium grained. So that's open to interpretation. So this is an eye type, igneous type intrusion. So it would have come from deeper in the mantle. And here we have the Buvelet Granodiorite. Ah. So, biotite, horn, blend, granodiorite, medium to coarse grain, equid grain, and porphyritic. So that means it's all crystals equal in size, equid granular. The porphyritic, I mean, some of them are larger uh, than others. And the porphyritic with larger crystals are usually quartz and felled spars. Resinous leaves of granite and diorite. So that would probably would have come from uh, the pylon uh, and diorite. So uh, I don't know whereabouts the diorite. It has to be deeper in the actual mantle. And also igneous type intrusion. So that is very interesting. So if you look at it on the map, so. Two eight three and two eight four. If we go back to here, we need to okay two eight three. Two eight three is the pylon granite. Two eight four is a baton granodiorite, and two eight five. So what we have here. So we've got 283, so that's the granite, and the granodiorite intruded into that granite. So this is an excellent paper that maybe I'll, oh, I'll do another video on. And this Bavu granodiorite is supposed to have gone over top of the actual uh, Baton granodiorite and probably remelted the granite itself. And here we have older Ordovician rock. So that's what I want to go and investigate. And if we look on this map, you can see it has roads going up. But most of this formation is actually out of bounds. So it's pretty much all farmland. And what you'll be looking at is road cuttings. So that's for the granite and the granite diorite. But the only formation that you can actually get into and have a look is the Bavu, because most of that is just a uh, park and it's also high elevation. So it's covered in forest uh, and it's not cleared and there's not too many uh, exposed rock surfaces. So that's the first one. That's, uh, I'm not going to do that first. What I want to do first is go to Heathcote. So we go to the geological formations. What I like to see at Heathcote is the Cambrian. And as you can see, it's mostly volcanics. So we have the Mount William Meta Basalt. The basalt's been altered. Uh, then we have the Lazy Bar Andesite, Show Gully, Boninite, so Deep Marine Boninite, Phenocris of Pyroxene, Chromite, Plagioclase, Spherulites, Minor Rhyolite Lava, Volcanic Sandstone, Ash, and Hyalo Clastite Breccia. Okay, Hyalo Clastite Breccia. And so that will be interesting to see, but 
what I want to have a look at is go to the actual map. <sighs> so here we have the Eddie Acaran. No, the Cambrian, should I say, not the Eddie Acaran. Uh, what are Pink Cliffs? So that's where I want to go. So the Pink Cliffs is the geological formation. And it's granite 286. And you also got exposures north and south of it. And later on, I'd actually like to explore this mountain range, the Silurian deposits that occur there. They also occur on this side. So EMK in 286. We have a look and see what they are. So if we look at EMK, it's up here. So it's uh, upper or late. Okay, and here we've got late Cambrian. So close to 490 million years ago. If we look at EMK, it's deep water, hemipelagic sediments, shales, mudstones, minor interbedded mafic volcanic sandstones. So sandstones derived from um, probably basalt volcanics, slump deposits, monomictic shirt breccia. So it's just breccia, it's made out of that. Polymictic conglomerate, so a conglomerate, minor shirt, laminated thickly bedded, especially fossiliferous with trilobites, brachiopods, hydroids, and shelly fossils. So you're going to struggle to get fossils. It's probably also been slightly metamorphosed. Uh, and that is in Olsley East Shale. So that's what I'd like to have a look at. And if we can find the actual granites. Ah, I forget the actual so 286. So commission a flat granodiorite. Let's have a look again, see if it's the actual formation that we want. And as you can see, you've got the, that formation up north. Okay, yeah, 286. Commission of flat granodiorite. So, this is what I would like to do. So, Luco granite, non-manini, igneous type, fine to medium grain, equiglanular cool. Composed of quartz, feldspar, hornblende, and alkali feldspar. So that would be interesting to actually have a look at. And as you can see, down at Heathcote, you're going to have a lot of interesting geology. So we've got granites intruding into Ordovician, Silurian, Permian deposits. And Lake Epilog that has a very interesting geology as well. So, and the last one that I want to see, if we look at here, we have the Council Trench Formation. So, it's a failed specific sandstone, medium to fine. Okay. So, medium. Okay. Failed specific sandstone, medium to fine grain, cream to brown, fragmentary fossil plant, interfeted lens. Quartz conglomerate, this conformably overlies Bacchus Marsh formation. So that's the tillite sandstone that you can see there. So you want to see that? So that's the tillite sandstone, pebbly sand, mudstone, pebbly mudstone conglomerate shows thin depositional faulting, soft sedimentary folding, and sedimentary dikes. So sedimentary dikes, clastic dikes, whatever you want to call it. Reddicks of fine quartz horn fells. So erratic. So these are large rocks that have been deposited by uh, glacial ice. Some of them are probably quite large. Okay, sandstone porphyro shirt slate up to 7 metres in diameter. Commonly striated, so the, the actual... Ice has scratched the surface. Plant fossils, 
of the Glossopteris flora, bald hill and marine brachiopods. Climb a day. So that's what I'd actually like. So if we go to the formation itself, try to find it. It's quite dark, you're not going to miss it. So this is the Permian deposits I want to see here. And a lot of it around it is like tertiary. So you've got tertiary older volcanics up here. You have uh, tertiary sedimentary deposits uh, down below. So if you're interested in tertiary deposits, you can look at that. And these are recent uh, QRA, so probably river alluvium. Uh, river QRT, River Terrace, River Colluvium, QRC. Uh, so if we zoom in, now you can see this is the major area they want to look. So you can actually drive up there, you're going to drive through the Permian, to like the Council Trench. It's like a park, so you can actually walk in there. It's open, but you do have farms along here, and a lot of this is also pretty much farms, so you're not going to be able to get access to it. So anyway, that's what I would like to do. Uh, I'm just going to do it anyway, but let me know. So let me know if you have any information about these formations. Uh, anything would help because I probably don't have the full view of uh, what these formations are. Thank you very much and have an awesome, uh, well, time alone in geology. Thank you and goodbye.